What's going on YouTube? This is your boy JL Musi. Today, we're gonna to be taking a look at how to rig and pose your character in Maya, and then taking that mesh information over to ZBrush and have it update our sculpted model with all the details. Now, this workflow works really great for those who like the control of rigging and posing in Maya while doing their sculpt information in ZBrush. Now, this is not gonna be a specific uh, rigging guide, uh, just use more as a workflow uh, pipeline tutorial. Um, and then one side note is that this could actually be done with any primary uh, 3D package. So uh, whether using 3D Studio Max, a Moto, uh, I've actually first started using this while rigging an XSI and then bringing things into ZBrush. So uh, it does work with pretty much any package that you do feel comfortable rigging in. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm gonna go ahead and start out by using uh, Maya's quick rig feature. This is just a quick and dirty way of getting a rig. Uh, if you're using this for animation, you probably wanna spend more time polishing uh, things uh, such as the weights. Uh, but for just a, a quick pose, the quick rig actually works very well. Uh, and basically it's just a guided process where uh, you create guides, you have the ability to mirror those guides from those guides, you create a bone hierarchy. Uh, you can throw a quick bind on there, and voila, you have pretty much a quick rig. So I exported my mesh as an OBJ and threw it in ZBrush, and then it's time to sculpt the um, details into my mesh, so those secondary tertiary details. So when I do my sculpting, uh, I like to do uh, most uh, the work in symmetry, about 80%, 90%, and then the last 10%, I will take symmetry off and sculpt all those asymmetrical details. So this workflow works really well with that. So we have our uh, sculpted uh, detail in ZBrush, and then we got our rigged character back in Maya. So let's go ahead and throw a quick pose on here. Maybe Apocalypse is tired of being a douchebag all the time, and wants to extend his hand out as a gesture of friendship to the X-Men. So let's just go ahead and create a quick pose. And I'm just gonna move the feet up a little bit. And uh, maybe I'll go ahead and select this hand and uh, tuck it inward as well. So now I'll go ahead and select my mesh, export it back as a, a OBJ and uh, take it into ZBrush and have our mesh be updated. Okay, so back in ZBrush, uh, I have my model. I'm basically gonna go ahead and import uh, the OBJ I exported. Now, one thing that's important here is to have uh, match the you know, subdivision level. So I wanna go ahead and drop all the way to my lowest subdivision. So there, I imported my mesh. And uh, you could definitely see the benefit of this uh, because all my uh, sculpted detail um, is pretty much just now uh, on my updated uh, pose. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and jump back in Maya and um, maybe you want to do a character with multiple poses. Uh, and this would actually work really good. Um, you have the ability in Maya to reset your poses if you wanted, back to NA pose, start over. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and do maybe that, um, maybe Apocalypse has been watching some old Michael Jackson videos and he wants to do that uh, 45 degree lean from Smooth Criminal, right? So uh, I'm just going to go ahead and adjust them a little bit and uh, pretty much export them back up to ZBrush and update them one more time. So I wanna go ahead and show you how to break this uh, before I end the video. Uh, it's actually pretty easy to do if you're not paying attention to a uh, couple of specific things. Uh, so maybe Apocalypse uh, broke up with his girlfriend, has gotten depressed, uh, sat home and uh, binge watched an entire, uh, the entire seasons of Breaking Bad on Netflix. So now he has this big old beer belly 
uh, and we go ahead. We have to go ahead and update um, his physique for that. So uh, once we're done updating, um, just kind of his look, we're gonna throw him back in ZBrush, and I'm gonna show you how this potentially can be breaking. So there's two ways of breaking this in ZBrush. Um, one is if you import the mesh, but you forget to uh, step down your subdivision levels in ZBrush and not have it match the uh, density that it did in Maya, right? So you'll get something like this where it just disappears uh, and you don't want that, right? Um, and this one's actually a very simple fix. All you need to do is just make sure that you step down your subdivision levels in ZBrush and that it matches the density in Maya. So you'll see here that uh, once we uh, step down in subdivisions and we try it again, um, it's going to go ahead and work. The second way how to break this is if you mess up or change the vertex order of your model. Uh, and that's actually very easy to do. Um, anytime that you combine, extract, or basically create a new mesh in Maya, you will actually disrupt that vertex order that Maya has initially created. Uh, and once that happens, um, your model will not align uh, and update within ZBrush. So here I'm trying to import that mesh uh, where I disrupted the vertex order and uh, ZBrush is going to tell you, hey, you know, things have changed. Uh, I can try to reproject this. Uh, it's going to try its best. Most times it will actually fail uh, and you'll get something that looks like a fanny pack. And you're not going to intimidate the X-Men wearing a fanny pack, right? So that's definitely not what you want. So keep those uh, vertex orders the same uh, when working in Maya uh, to avoid any issues when uh, you're changing things up and bringing back into ZBrush. So that wraps up our uh, short workflow on how to rig in Maya or really any primary 3D package. Uh, set up uh, one or multiple poses, bring them into ZBrush, and have all that sculpted detail be updated within your pose. Uh, please uh, like and subscribe to my channel. And uh, I would love to hear if you guys have any cool Maya to ZBrush workflows of your own. And leave those on the comment section down below. Thanks for watching. Catch you next time.